Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital News YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. At the quarter main forces, Tracy returns from a lift and thanks Cody for letting her try a new defile. Gregory shows up and apologizes for being late as he was taking in the evening. They talk about the spectacular evening, and Cody suggests they watch it together on some nags. Gregory passes, saying maybe coming time. Cody tells them a story about trying to impress a girl he liked when he was youngish by climbing up on a pony for the first time, only to fall flat on his face. He ended up with eight aches, but the girl sat next to him the coming day on a machine. Tracy asks what the moral of the story is, and Cody says to reach high. Cody takes off, and Tracy says he's well-meaning. Gregory wishes everyone treated him like that, and he gives good advice. She invites him to stay for one of Sasha's fabulous feasts, but he says she needs to go to Connie Island. She laughs and has no desire to be around the Bensonhurst squad. He says he needs her there to tell him where he needs to stand, among other effects. He needs her to be his backup in case he can't go to Thuiting. Trissy won't entertain that idea and says he'll preside over this marriage. And it's meant to be. He explains he's just covering his bases in case he loses his breath or can't read his notes, and if so, he'll need her to go on for him. Tracy is sure he's impeccably able of marrying Brooklyn and Chase while being the most seductive man in the room. He thanks her for flattering him and says they need to get her to Kanye's land. In the quarter main niche, Michael comes home from work and tells Sasha how great she's doing with the cuisine. He says not only is Olivia less stressed, but they all have access to their kitchen still. Still, he's a bit surprised she took the job, given their history. He also feels terrible she walked down from deception and wishes he could have helped her work out a better deal in leaving. Sasha says she wanted to walk down, and Gladys formerly took all her plutocrat, so it's not like she has no practice not being fat. She says she jumped at this job when Olivia offered it, and she enjoys it. Michael would have advanced her plutocrat to drift her over in her job hunt if she demanded it. Sasha thanks him but wouldn't have taken it. She likes being then, as she always endured to be a part of a family. She says now she gets to cook for people she knows and trusts. Sasha realizes perhaps she should have asked him before taking the job, and she hopes she isn't making effects awkward between him and Willow. Michael assures her she's not, and all the Quartermains agree that they love having her then. Sasha thanks him and says she doesn't see this as a step down from deception. She authentically loves cuisine and believes that her food makes people happy. She says she's happy seeing the love he and Willow share too. She had it formerly and may have a tag in. Suddenly, Cody enters and asks, Have what? He explains he came to scrounge for leavings, so Sasha offers to whip him commodity over. She leaves and Cody calls her amazing. Michael agrees and asks what his plans are for all that amazingness. Cody can't believe he just threw that out there. Michael says he sees the sparks between them, and Sasha is one of the stylish people he knows. He hopes Cody is serious about her and will be good to her. Cody says he'll be as good to her as she lets him. Sasha returns with some beef stew for Cody and asks where Michael is. Cody says he left, but not before advising him to treat her well. She says that's not Michael's job, and it's her job to ensure she's treated well. She also tells Cody he doesn't need a lecture from Michael to be good to her, as he formerly is. At Eva's gallery, Stella helps Trina stuff envelopes while telling her stories about their family. Trina tells Stella that she knows what she's doing, and it's working. Stella says she's just spending time with her. But Trina knows she's trying to help her move on and get check. She admits she's no nearer to figuring it out than the last time they talked. Stella says occasionally you just need a clinch and shoulder to lean on, and offers Trina hers. They clinch and get back to work. Jordan stops by and is glad to see them both so happy, but she's about to be a buzzkill. She tells them there's a possibility Heather's case will be re-examined as her defective hipsterism poisoned her and caused her imbalances over the times. Stella has read about this in other cases, but still, 
She does not suppose it can excuse Heather from being a cold, thoroughbred killer. Jordan explains some people believe her poisoning directly caused her to go insane and kill. Trinit asks who would question that. Jordan says they'll find out anyway, and it's Laura. Trina is shocked that Spencer's grandmother is leading the charge to rethink Heather's case. Trina feels betrayed, both for herself and for Spencer. Stella does not condemn her, and she's trying hard to see it from Laura's point of view. She's trying to understand what if this was a member of their family. Jordan understands what they're feeling, but she also understands the courage it's taking for Laura to take this in. Trina asks if Laura is trying to set Heather free. Jordan does not presume to know Laura's intentions, but the immediate question is where Heather should be while everything is sorted out. Stella knows people under strain can be driven to do insane effects. Trina switches out what about the victims, their families, and indeed the pain Heather foisted on them. In Drew's office, Nina tells Drew she does not suppose she should be then and push effects with Willow. But Drew tells her to calm down and he'll handle it. Willow arrives and is surprised that Nana is there. He says they were belting up some account business and tells Nana that Willow is preparing for her first PSA. Nana says that's great and she's proud of her and of Sunup for supporting this good cause. Nina says they'll leave them to it, but Drew stops her and asks her to sit in. Willow knows Nina has a magazine to run, but he says Nina has experience with media and might see commodity in her trial run that he doesn't. Still, he will leave it up to her. Willow lets Nina stay, and they watch her give a trial speech. Drew says she was fantastic, and Nina says she was spot on. Willow thinks there's a but in there from Nina, and she wants to know what it is. Nana tells her she's a success story, and she survived cancer, and has a thrilling life now, a family she loves. She tells her to show the followership that they can survive and thrive too. Willow interprets that as smiling further. Nina says she's got this and will get back to her office. Willow thanks her before she goes. Willow admits Nina's advice was good, and Drew suggests they bring her in on the design as she and Crimson could help them reach their targets. Willow accuses Drew and Nina of planning this from the morning. She thinks he's trying to help her and Nina patch effects up. Drew says he'd no way do anything to hurt her, and he gets the situation between her and her mama is complicated. Willow notes she has knit aloud of Nina in a maternal way for a while. He feels that if he can get past what Nina did, she could do it too. Willow notes she's opened herself up to Nina more than formerly, and without fail it ends up with falsehoods and manipulation. She asks how numerous times she needs to go through this before she learns her assignment. Drew suggests perhaps Nana had to learn the assignment and not her, and perhaps she has. He also knows it's easier for him to move on as he only has a professional relationship with her. And she can't wound him like she could her. He also owes her in reason, and he admits he did finagle the meeting so they could interact. Still, from a business perspective, Nana can be an asset. Willow offers to suppose about it, but also has no right to come down on him when she's been keeping commodity from him about his family. She notes this is non-public and tells him how she and Michael set up Jason hiding in the boathouse after jumping off the ground, and they helped bind him up. She also sutured him up. Drew says Jason shouldn't have put them in that situation, but helping Jason is just who she is. She helps people, and her secret is safe with her. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.